Hello there, the other day I showed you some prints that I made, one in color, one in black and white, from the Pro One versus the Pro 1000. Again, everything was equal, same paper, same inks, or at least OEM inks in the correct profile, OEM profiles. And basically they were indistinguishable. So of course, somebody brought up the obvious, my images didn't stress or did not challenge the printer enough. So I went to the DigiDogs website. This is Andrew Rodney, and I downloaded a doozy of an image, okay? Let me see, here it is. And this is for the Pro 1. This is for the Pro 1000. This might be difficult to see on video, but let me, if you please bear with me. I'm gonna show you first the differences between printing using perceptual intent and relative colorimetric. By the way, this is the image. It is ridiculous. This image is impossible for any printer to reproduce the way it appears on the monitor because it exceeds the ability of the monitor, basically, unless you have you know, a $2,000 monitor and just about any printer. But here it is. One is in perceptual, which basically what it does, perceptual takes colors that are out of gamut and just shifts every single color in equally until the out of gamut colors kind of fit internally in that so-called invisible gamut bubble. So, Internal colors that are already in gamut get shifted to make room for the other ones that are coming from the outside. So it would be like a ballroom and you have overflow of people and you just tell the people that are inside to get closer together in the center so that we can have people coming from the outer perimeters of the room and fill that room up. So everybody has to shift toward the center. Now, relative colorimetric does not do that. Whatever colors are in gamut already, stay put and everything else that was outside just gets crammed around the periphery of that room. If you're gonna use the room for an analogy, you would have the people that were already inside are comfortably standing together. They have space between them. They can talk and they're not you know, rubbing elbows too much, but the people that were outside are just crammed inside that room. They stay around the edges. So that's what happens to these colors. They get pushed in. All right. Here we go. This image is composed of, again, like I said, a couple of images, basically three photographs, fish against a blue background that is just out of this world, a bunch of blankets, again, super saturated, a guy on his fishing boat bailing water out, and again, very, very bright colors. And then you have this generated um, spectrum right here. Then you have the saturated to white from pure saturation to white graduated display and then you have these balls. And here's the amazing thing about these little balls right here. They start fully saturated on their outer perimeter and as they go inward they begin to desaturate and when they reach the center it is pure white. The opposite happens with the others. They start saturated, for example, zero for green, 255 for red, and zero for blue. And as they become toward the center, they begin to get some black, some mixture, equal mixture of the other two colors to create darker versions of that color until they reach the center. That should be zero, zero, zero. Well, it should be a very gradual change, but printers just cannot handle these ridiculous gradients. So here's what happens with a Pro One, perceptual and relative, and I use relative. And I'll try to show you what's happening here. We'll start with the balls themselves. That is the most, um, radical part of this image. Very smooth graduations there. 
very smooth graduations here, very smooth graduations there, and the same here. Rendering intent does not bother black and white, okay? It only bothers colors. It only deals with colors. Now, check out what happens here in perceptual, the cyan circle, a huge band right there where it should be more gradual. This is perceptual. Remember, it pushed all of the tonalities in and this is relative. So you have less banding on the outer area. There's a couple of little bands internally, but it's pretty much a lot smoother. It's not such a huge, all of a sudden drop to this shade and then basically going to pure black. The same thing happens here with the magenta. Actually, you have a change of hue right here. There's a little bit of change of hue here as well, but it's very gradual. The drop off is very gradual. The yellow, this actually works better for perceptual. You have more of a drop off, more gradual. And here it's less gradual. It affects different colors differently. Look at that. Look at here. Literally you have a ring and the same thing here. Now. This is just rendering it then. So let's just go ahead and look at relative colorimetric. And let's compare the two, the Pro 1 and the Pro 1000. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll get our relative colorimetric and our relative colorimetric for the Pro 1000. And now we can make a direct comparison with the best rendering intent for the two printers and see how they perform. So let's look at the balls. Then we'll go ahead and look at this. There's something to be um, studied there as well. So this is the Pro 1 on top, Pro 1000 on the bottom. Oh boy. Look at this. Oh, by the way, this is semi-gloss, OEM ink on both printers, custom profiles for both printers done on the Color Monkey. Oh man, look at that. The Pro 1, huge drop off from light to a couple of rings before it reaches the center, the darkest point. From the mid color to white, it's very gradual and good. So that kind of, you know, that's a fail. For the Pro 1000, very gradual, much more gradual. Same thing here. I see a huge, a huge change in this magenta one, just like we did in the perceptual rendering example. So yeah, magenta here, more gradual. Here there's a slight little ring. That's a Pro 1000. Yellow, this is more, much more gradual drop off from a saturated yellow to black. See that the center portion where it begins to get darker it's larger in diameter and more gradual. This one is more concentrated in the center. Huge band right there. Huge band right here. In fact, it's a triple band. One, two, three, and then black. Pro 1000, Pro 1. Very gradual here. Uh, I see a bigger, darker area. So it went from saturated to dark a lot sooner. It did not drop off gradually. Again, this is super exaggerated example. You will never see this in regular photographs, okay? You will never experience it. And you will see at the end what I mean by that. The only way you can see this type of um, effect is doing prints using this type of image. And I can provide you with the image if you want. Here, not so apparent, but the yellow on the Pro 1, the yellow on the Pro 1000. It's a little difference in the way it drops. And um, they're about the same. All the colors are about the same uh, strength. But here's what's interesting here. And again, you probably will not see this in any of your normal photographs. Pro 1000, Pro 1. On the image, when you look at it on the monitor, there is a little darker area right here. And it's kind of gone here on the Pro 1. You don't see that. 
Remember I told you about those blues that this printer is able to produce, the 1000? This is where it comes into play, this region right here. It's just not as saturated, not as separated as these are, okay? So I hope you can see this. I'm not sure if I'm aiming this correctly, but I see a bit of like separation banding type effect here where here is a lot smoother. So there you go. Now, what about the images? I see no difference between the images. I only see differences between these extreme super out of gamut examples. And so this basically is telling me that, yeah, neither one of these printers can actually reproduce these super extreme colors that are way out of gamut, these super extreme gradients that are way out of most printers' capabilities. But when it comes to regular images, I look at this very, very carefully and I cannot see the difference between the, uh, the guy bailing water out of his boat. I cannot see any difference between the uh, fish laying on that blue cloth. And I cannot see any difference between the super bright um, blankets. None whatsoever. So let's go ahead and look at some real world images. This is what it's all about. You can do this all day long till the cows come home. But really, what really matters is how do these printers render your images, right? That's what we are interested in. So Pro 1, let's just look at this one first. Pro 1, Pro 1000. So what am I seeing? Let's look at those skies. Let's look at that sky that I was bragging about that the Pro 1000 with the blue ink can reproduce. I see a slight difference, okay? In fact, this super saturated image may not even be stressful enough to extract the ability of this printer to show me those blues and purples and deep violets. Both printers are producing great images. The bottom one, Pro 1000, yeah, it's a little better. At least right here as I look at it, it's a little better. Reds, oranges. Really almost imperceptible, the differences. Here's something really interesting. I just noticed just now. There's a roof down here that is very deep blue in the Pro 1. It is super deep blue on the Pro 1000. Bingo. That nailed it right there. That's what I'm talking about. The same thing right here and right here. It's a difference. This image is bordering on being um, a difficult one to print, but apparently uh, that's not the case. And man, that looks fabulous. So that is it. Again, if you are printing black and white, none of this matters. None of this matters because you're only working with values, black to white. And the printer is using most of its inks that are in the neutral or so-called black monochrome inks to print the resulting images and is using bits of other colors to make sure that the output is neutral. And so it's hardly using color. So this type of effect, this blue ink is not going to be used. This fabulous red that this printer has is really not going to be used. So that does not come into play. Now, let's go ahead and look at the black and whites. And again, you will see that really there's no difference whatsoever between the two outputs. So Pro 1000 on the bottom, Pro 1 on the top. And yeah, I could look at this all day long and really there's nothing that I can say that is different. I'm looking at tonality changes. I'm looking at contrast. I'm looking at detail on the darks. Here's a nice fallout where the uh, walls go from detail, less detail, less detail to pure black. And I'm looking to see if I see more detail on one print than on the other. Let's put them this way. If you look at the print out of kilter, then you can concentrate on details a lot better than you if you look at them correctly. So often I will tilt a print on its side and, you know, it is so minuscule, almost imperceptible. This, okay, Pro 1, 
I see a little bit more detail on the shadow than on the Pro 1000. That's it. Remember, Pro 1 has three grays. Pro 1000 has only two grays. They had to make room for that blue ink they were introducing. So they chuck one of the grays. They have one that they call photo gray. And so once they did that, they added the blue so that you can reach these ridiculous blues right here. And so now I believe maybe the print engine kind of um, compensates for that and still produces beautiful black and whites, even though you don't have the luxury of that extra gray ink, which the Pro One provides for you. To me, you know, the Pro One is, is one of the best printers out there at this moment. If they had a user replaceable waste ink tank, ah, oh, that would be perfect. That would be the perfect printer. I probably would not have purchased this. Since we're gonna go into possibly using third-party inks, I need to have some printer that allows me to, you know, remove that wasted ink in an ink cart. That's easy. You just pop it off, put a new one in. On the Pro One, once the pads get saturated, that is it. Is the end of the printer. Basically, you have to send it in, and it's going to cost you about the same as I paid for it, you know, so that is something to think about. But um, yeah, this is a great printer. So far, the differences that I saw were very minor, even using that super stressful image to print with. Now, if you guys want that, I have included it in my pack of images. I will go ahead and re-upload and give you guys links as you ask for them. I will provide them for you. Remember, when you go to sendspace.com, I don't have an account with them. I'm using the free version. So when you click on the link, you're going to get a pop-up to some other site. Close that pop-up. Don't get fooled by whatever they're offering you. Close it. Go back and you will see the download link. It says download and you will receive this uh, about a 60 something megabyte file. You unrar it or unzip it and there will be a multitude of test images included in there. And so that way you don't have to go around searching for them. I have provided them for you. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. Again, it's um, very difficult to do this in this sort of situation because this is not a control environment for lighting, at least. You really need to uh, sit down on a well-lit uh, photo booth and look at these prints and be able to maybe at that point tell the difference between either one. Either rendition did not give this one the plus. It did not give that one the plus over there. Some advantages, some disadvantages. Some advantages, some disadvantages. But when it comes to real world prints, the two produce amazing results. And that is all we want. All right, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, everyone, continue printing. Be happy. Uh, I changed it, didn't I?